Hey, you look different. I wasn't sure if I should address the elephant in the room, but I haven't uploaded in a while. Hi, how you doing? If ever there were something to break me out of my hiatus, it would be a new Yacht Club game. So let's talk about that. Those of you who have been around since the really early days of this channel might know that one of my first big breaks uh, or sources of exposure was pretty much due to Shovel Knight. I made a video about the game and not much longer after that, I joined my now longtime friend, some call me Johnny, for his Shovel Knight review. I've played Shovel Knight and its various campaigns so many times now and I love that game to death, but it's safe to say this channel's history can't be told without mentioning Shovel Knight. Now Yacht Club Games, the studio behind Shovel Knight, would go on to work on different spin-offs and even publish another great retro throwback game, Cyber Shadow, but in the back of my mind, I've been eagerly awaiting either a true sequel to the game or another game by the same team. Fast forward to, well, like almost a week ago now, and Yacht Club Games announced via a live stream on G4's channel that they were working on and launching a Kickstarter for their brand new game, Mina the Hollower. With the campaign goal cheekily set at $1 more than Shovel Knight's campaign raised, uh, just under a decade ago now? Uh, excuse me while I go to try to hold in my vomit. The game unsurprisingly got funded in a matter of hours. Now, before I get to the important part, I do want to briefly touch on the Kickstarter situation. So, I've noticed a few people seem to have been rubbed the wrong way by Yacht Club crowdfunding this game, but I think their reasoning makes sense. They want the community involved with the game's development just as they were with Shovel Knight, and honestly, I like that. The fans were a huge part of Shovel Knight and they want to keep that going with Mina. The main argument people have is that Yacht Club is successful and don't need the money and that they could have funded the game on their own, but that isn't the point. Now, I'm no game developer, and I sure as hell don't own a game studio, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a wild guess and assume that the measly $300,000 Shovel Knight raised absolutely did not fund that game in its entirety. And with that being said, Yacht Club is much bigger now, with probably a lot more bills, payrolls, and overhead to go along with it. The roughly $300,000 they're asking for probably isn't doing as much as you might think it is in funding this game's development, especially considering the mass majority of people who backed the game chose the tier which gives them a digital copy. They basically just purchased the game in advance. And everybody already knows Yacht Club's gonna deliver, so the risk factor that's normally involved in Kickstarter campaigns is not even a thing. No part of me thinks Yacht Club is trying to cheap out and put the cost on the fans, so I'd rather just nip that in the bud. Now after seeing footage during the live stream and hearing them talk about the game, I was sold pretty much immediately. I'm a big fan of Link's Awakening, and unless your glasses are foggy, I'm sure you can tell why this game had my attention as quickly as it did, other than it being a Yacht Club game. Well, luckily, thanks to my good friend Celia from Yacht Club, I managed to get a Steam key to try out the demo they put together for media coverage. And I played it! So, let's talk about my experience with the demo for Yacht Club Games' newest project, Mina the Hollower. So, I'm sure you can immediately tell what they were going for visually. This game screams Game Boy Zelda, i.e. Link's Awakening or the Oracle games, and a Game Boy Color aesthetic is exactly what was intended, but not just in terms of style. The game pulls a lot from not only 2D Zelda as a whole, but the Game Boy Zelda game specifically. For example, Mina can jump a la Rock's Feather from Link's Awakening, but unlike in Zelda, because this is a base mechanic and not a power-up or an item, it's actually a main element to the game's level design, as Mina surprisingly incorporates a lot of platforming challenges, and it's really not very often that we see top-down games like this with such an emphasis on platforming, but considering the team behind it, it definitely makes sense. Now, although it may look very reminiscent of Zelda, and definitely pulls a lot of inspiration from it, Mina the Hollower is actually way, way more action-focused, not only focusing more on combat like, say, Oracle of Seasons, but even going a step further and going all-in on the action aspect of it. Now at first, I felt like Mina's regular movement speed was kind of sluggish. Not necessarily slow, but just slower than I'd like it to be. Felt just a bit like I was being held back, and that if she moved just a little faster, it would be more satisfying and comfortable. That was until I realized that there was another option. So funny enough, Yacht Club managed to make yet another game whose main mechanic is digging. Mina is a mouse, 
so one of her specialties is burrowing. You use her burrowing mechanic to dig up bones, which are basically this game's currency, like gold from Shovel Knight, but also act as experience points because there's RPG elements and you can level up Mina. And also just like Shovel Knight, if you die, you lose them and then have to go retrieve them, but I digress. And also to traverse through the game's obstacles. Sometimes you approach a gate or wall which you can't pass unless you burrow under it, or you reach a gap that you can't jump over, but burrowing increases Mina's movement speed, giving you extra momentum to clear a bigger gap. Burrowing can also be used during combat to evade enemies, and this one little mechanic opens up the floodgates for what's possible in terms of level design. Now, the demo is only one stage, but that's really all I need to know just how bonkers they can get if they really want to. And if Shovel Knight is any indication, I'm sure they'll be doing just that. As I said though, tis faster to burrow than to walk, so much like the Talon Trot from Banjo-Kazooie, I'm sure this mechanic will be strategically spammed to maximize movement. Now, I don't want to give too much away, but it's immediately obvious that Mina is yet again another retro gaming melting pot and pulls a lot of different elements from a lot of different places. For example, there's a part in the demo that's stripped straight from Mario 2, only more fleshed out. The Fanto encounters in Mario 2 are a fun idea, but they're pretty much over as soon as they start. Mina basically takes that idea and cranks it to 11, making something much more substantial out of it. Oh, and you can whip the candles, and that's not at all where the Castlevania stuff ends, if you uh, couldn't tell. The combat itself takes more than a couple nods from Castlevania. Mina's main attack is a whip, which, much like Castlevania, is slow to fire off, and once again, much like Castlevania, is aided by sub-weapons, which this game calls sidearms. Mina can also collect equipable trinkets that each have a different effect, like buffing her attack or defense, or reducing the knockback she takes. Personally, the one I found the most useful is one that lets Mina hold her breath longer during burrowing, which allows you to stay underground longer, as Mina can only burrow for X amount of time before she needs to come up for air. Combat is clearly a major focus, and the game gives you a lot of tools for the job. Throwing it back to Shovel Knight once again, this game is full of secrets and hidden areas, which are hidden very similarly, which house treasure, which in this game is the bones I mentioned earlier, but they're just as satisfying to collect as the gold from Shovel Knight. There's also a colorful cast of NPCs with cheeky things to say or hints to give, making the world feel more fleshed out, as instead of having a hub world with NPCs separating selectable stages, everything is apparently going to be interconnected, but as the devs have said in an interview, they don't really enjoy backtracking, so I don't really think that's going to be an issue. So I've mentioned Shovel Knight a bunch, but it's kind of hard not to. A lot of this game is very reminiscent of Shovel Knight, and initially I had wondered if it was built on the skeleton of Shovel Knight, but nope. Turns out they created a brand new engine in-house for the game, which is pretty impressive. A lot of work, but that also means they have complete control over the game. Now, I don't want to keep harping on Shovel Knight, and I'll stop after this, I promise, but the music, well, it's being written by Jake Kaufman, and I think that's all I really have to say. It goes without saying, it's catchy as hell chiptune music, and if you like Shovel Knight's OST, you're not going to have any complaints here if the demo is any indication of the direction it'll be going in. Being that the demo was only one stage, I only got one taste of what the boss fights would be like, and let me tell you, I went the entire demo without dying, and then the boss f***ing jabated me with a surprise phase two of the fight. Besides falling for the old bait and switch though, the boss fight was super engaging. Much more action focused and took more dexterity than any Zelda fight I've ever done. Where this game heavily strays away from Zelda is in the fact that it focuses much, much more on movement, and I can see them making some crazy combat scenarios in boss fights. I'm not saying this first boss was the most riveting boss fight I've ever experienced, but it's actually really cool blending a sort of Mega Man boss with Castlevania, and then all placed on top of top-down Zelda. It's wild, and there's a ton of possibilities. All in all, I took my sweet ass time and the demo took me 47 minutes, though I didn't find all the secrets, so I'll need to replay it. Probably in a live stream or something. Twitch.tv slash give the kid YT. But as of right now, this game is shaping up to be absolutely incredible. Considering the game is pretty early in development, I didn't expect it to be quite as polished as it is, but if you told me this was an eShop demo or something, I'd have believed you. When I first saw the reveal trailer, I thought this was going to be Yacht Club Zelda, and according to them, that's kind of what they're going for. But I feel like it's so much more than that, and much like Shovel Knight, it'll have no problem paving a way of its own. I'm already literally obsessed with Mina as a character, and it took like 12 seconds. Their Kickstarter campaign will still be going on for the better part of a month now, so if this looks like something you'd be into, I strongly urge you to go check it out, and even back it if you can. There's a lot of opportunities in the tiers they've offered to become a part of this game's development, and the fact that it really doesn't take much to have access to peek behind the curtain during the development process of a game is something I think is great and often taken for granted about making games in the current day. I, for one, am playing the 
out of Mina the Hollower the second I get my hands on it, and I hope you all do too. I'm also definitely going to be streaming the current demo in the coming days, so if you're interested in seeing that, you can follow me over at, uh, here. I don't want to say it out loud because I honestly think YouTube can hear it and they'll slap me on the wrist algorithmically. And also, big thanks to Celia and the rest of Yacht Club Games for sending me the demo and giving me the opportunity to cover it. There's nowhere to go but up with this one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it and want to see more, there's a couple other videos right there you can check out. And if you want to see everything I upload, subscribe and then tap the bell icon. And maybe you'll see it. And if you want to help support the channel, I also have a Patreon too.